Hello, welcome back for part two of the word. And this is basically uh, in relation to the level of forgiveness that you have for the people that have done you wrong. Now, I did some research while I was off the um, live because I wanted to see if I could find information about the scripture. And lo and behold, see, I got a phone right now that has light internet, meaning LTE. And the LTE on this particular device is very weak. So I can't do major searches. I can't watch no videos on this particular phone. So the Lord has a way that you can do what I need you to do, but you ain't doing no more than that <laughs> in certain seasons. So I checked for the scripture. I found like a series of scriptures. So I might go through those. But in continuation of what I was saying, that um, when it comes down to it, this chair is too far down. Uh, when it comes down to it, you kind of got to look at you're going into a season where the people that have had access to you up until this point are no longer going to have access. This is their parting gift. This is God making your enemies your footstools. This is their last goodbye to you. This is it. Okay? Because of the way that the Lord has, is going to instruct you to go about doing your wedding, it's going to automatically eliminate some of the people from coming to you. Okay? Because some of y'all supposed to have destination weddings. Let me just throw that right there. Some of y'all supposed to have destination weddings because y'all supposed to have a destination wedding. Some people just don't got their passport. And because they ain't got their passport, they're not going to be able to come to where you're destined to go. That's a word right by itself. Go ahead, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> and they're not going to be able to make it to the destination. So they're going to be the ones that are going to be in that outer court that when the gate closed, just like in Cinderella, they're going to be standing on the outside. They're going to be looking through the glass at what's going to happen to you. Okay? And God will make sure they see it. In the name of Jesus. They're going to see what they missed. Because they did not do what the Lord told them to do and come forth with the gift that they were supposed to come forth with the gift of. And bless you as a party. They're going to miss it. They're going to miss that last opportunity. And from that particular point forward, they ain't going to have access. Next, and you have to have wisdom to this because the people that are going to be allowed, meaning the people that you're going to literally be putting on the list to be at your wedding, these are the ones that um, they're going to send you gifts or bring you gifts. And these are maybe the ones that you had a real big issue with. And the test of your forgiveness is going to be allowing them to this wedding. Because you're going to see them again. And not allowing bitterness and naughtiness of your heart to uh, deny access to people that are supposed to have access to you even this one last time. And what I was saying, oh, the word I was looking for may have been, you are not going to receive the fullness of the level of the degree of blessing that you're supposed to receive if you do not operate in a level of forgiveness and not a level of pride or uh, criticism from a naughtiness of your own heart, okay? 
towards this person for what they had did, said, spoken about you, operating in any level of, um, you may be operating in a level of resistance. Because it's funny, Tiffany Montgomery was saying that um, in one of her prayers that you may have a level of resentment for what the, what they had done to you. And because of that level of resentment, it is building up an infirmity in your body. And in a way, you allowing this person co to come to your wedding and the way that you act accordingly may also uh, give you a reprieve from um, an infirmity that may, may have tried to come upon you because your unforgiveness has a level of dormancy to can lead to a dormancy of illness because it's that old saying you heard people say that um, me being angry at you is like allowing poison is like drinking poison and expecting it to kill you. Holding on to that unforgiveness towards this person could literally be the one thing that's per, that at a later date could cause an illness come up to come upon you. Ask me how I know. I had a family member uh, end up with cancer. And I knew it was because of the bitterness that they carried in their body. Mm -hmm. Bless you, Jesus, for remission. So, um, with that being said, you may be actually preventing yourself by by actually forgiving them it prevents any type of all coming against you or the enemy holding something against you at a later date that will allow an infirmity to come upon you because of what you're holding on to bitterness you're holding on to anger you're holding on to something you have to continue to maintain the deliverance of the forgiveness in which you already gave okay and it's gonna come through different people on different levels these people for it says in, your, in the word that the enemies you see today you will, shall see no more but that don't mean that at the level that you elevate to there ain't a whole nother set of people that's gonna have the exact same spirits on them when you see the exact same spirits on them you can't be sitting there like well because i had unforgiveness for that set of people I'm going to just not even let you in my life because it's like it ain't even worth the problem. When the Lord's saying, I may need you to let that person in your life and your grace to this person may bring them to me. That's why in some cases the Lord allowed you to go through people rejecting you so often. It's because in your humbleness to not react back, during that season of testing, he um, he saw your heart. You were tested, but so were they. And he allowed the rejection in order to prepare you for where you're going. But. You're not allowed to hold on to that anger and resentment towards that. Because that's something you got to hash out with God. And you can't hold on to that. Because God will always come back and circumcise your heart before he circumcised. You could sit there and pray all these prayers over 15, 15 different people. Guess who's going to get the first hit? You. You can see all the problems and all the criticism of everybody else. Guess who's going who's going to uh, come back to? You. You could pray for forgiveness. You could pray for whatever. whatever. You going to get the first one. 
Remember that. You. So, with that being said, you're going to have to forgive them. That does not mean that upon this point of interaction, this is the, the actually the final determining point. This is the determining point for you, whether the people will make it past this point and seek the Lord on that. Because, hey, because of what he's done in the hearts of these people and they've come to him, you may actually be allowed that once they've come and made it right with God, they may have access to you. The Lord may have them later down the line, after they go through their judgment, come back and he may say, now they can have access to you. But until they deal with the demons that they, they got, they can't have any more access than what he allows in this moment. And you can't operate in the wrong spirit um, because you are now in this elevated position. You can't allow pride to say, oh, well, I, I, y'all peasants for me, y'all would have you, I don't need to deal with y'all, blah, 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 because that's a level of bitterness, that's a level of what have you. We deal with it. We deal with it. And you got to surrender that back to God. There are a lot of things, there are a lot of things that you got to surrender and give back to God that sometimes you got to go back and, what does the word say? You got to, forgive that person 70 times 7 but they keep bitterly hurting 70 times 7 uh, Colossians says in 325 whoever has done you wrong will be repaid for his wrong And Romans twelve seventeen through 21 talks about if someone does you wrong, do not reply to him wrong. Try to do whatever is considered uh, to be good. Do whatever is possible to be good to this person because it... Um, it literally throws hot coals upon the heads of your enemy when um, you are kind to them. Because remember, they are not your enemy. The person is not your enemy. The spirits operating in them or through them is your enemy. Just like the Holy Spirit operates through you, these are a series of spirits that are operating through them. They are not your enemy. They aren't. But in your forgiveness of them does not mean that they have to remain having access to you. So this is your parting ways gift. Okay. Meaning they give you the parting of ways and the Lord's going to deal with them in the judgment at this point. Now at a later date may come that um, they may come back. But until the Lord gives you clearance and tells you, and some of y'all, that's why I say pray about who you're going to invite to your wedding. Because some of them won't even have access to that. Some of them will escort themselves out the door because they're not going they, they, where you're having it. It's not going to allow them. Um, so in, uh, in that I was, I was watching Deani Lev's video about a week ago. I'll say it was about a week ago and she was talking about 
the experience in which she had at an Airbnb and the testimony of the fact that it came together in her favor. But what was done to her was done to her by another Christian that was being tested. Some of these people, it's a test to them before their judgment. And it will determine the severity of their judgment. That they were willing to come back to you. It's like, um, I always pray. One of my prayer postures is to always pray to renounce, denounce, uproot, and, um, come out of alignment and agreement when these people come forth to you in an apology they literally are in a way making their first penance to renounce denounce and come out of alignment and agreement with the word curses that they spoke over your life mm-hmm. and it's something that the Lord will look kindly upon as he ushers them into their judgment. So it literally be, will be the temperature gauge for them to uh, determine what their judgment is going to be after this case. Mm -hmm. So... Because as I said before, some of these people are going to be ushered into judgment. And some of them are going to go through their judgment during your hidden season while you're being courted by your spouse or uh, while God's preparing you for the culmination of your marriage. Okay. And to go and go through any more scriptures um so you got to use wisdom because not everybody's supposed to have access to you it, it's a scripture in the bible that talks about when lot and his wife went up the mountain and she turned around and looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. You can't allow these people coming around. Or God telling you these people are going to come around. You can't allow that to make you become melancholy in your mind. Because you may not even gain access fully to your blessing. Because you're concerned about their judgment. You're concerned about what's going on with them. You can't allow yourself to be concerned about that. God knows what he's doing. You can't even be concerned about the fact that this is the last, this may very well be the last time you see these people. Because either a judgment's going to come upon them and the judgment is not going to be good. Meaning death may come upon them or the judgment may be so. Uh, that they just don't have access to you no more. And you can't turn back and get caught up in the past because of that. You got to focus on where you're going. Because where God is taking you, the weight of that is too important um, for you to allow your own thought process, melancholy, all that kind of stuff in relation to people to hold you back. Um, this courtship period is a probationary period before your marriage where you and the God of Dan's spouse are going to be operating together in such a way 
and you're going to learn each other but also you're going to be preparing mm-hmm. to let go of these last little things so with that being said um I'm being brought back to that destination thing I said. Some of them aren't even going to be able to make it to the destination. God's going to purposely tell you your wedding or this marriage is going to be in a location. That they're going to have to stretch to come to. And you may not be the one to provide them simple access to get to you for this event. God's not going to allow it. Because it's supposed to be on them to make the decision to stretch to come to where it is that you're going to have this wedding. Because I thought about it before. And it's another reason why um, I feel like I don't even want a big wedding at all. Because of the fact that the orchestrating of getting the people together on both sides to me is a nightmare thought. And then a destination. <laughs> I don't even know how many people got passports in my family. <laughs> so that's an easy eliminator. But at the same time, God may be trying to test them in the stretch. Give them fair warning. So, with that being said, um, some people have to go to the mountaintop. Meaning, their stretch to come to you Their effort to make the decision to come to you is going to prove um, their tenacity tenacity and the desire to change. That's why I said some people, they're just going to mail you gifts. Meaning, uh, you may send them the wedding invitation and... Uh, instead of a RSVP, you have the prov- provision on the um, invitation. You can just send you gifts. <laughs> and some of them will simply decide, I'm going to send a gift instead. Because I'm not going through the process. I'm not going to stretch myself to get to. Because some of them just really aren't the type of people to stretch themselves some and I heard this from um, one of the ministers the other day she was talking about she was going to be kind enough for one of these people that wanted to come to her event she was going to offer them room offer them flight coverage all of that You could offer these people. There are certain people you could offer to do it for them. To make it as easy as possible for them to get this thing taken care of. And to come to you. And some of them will literally say, nope. I'll just send you a gift because I'm not coming. I'm not going to traverse that far. I'm not going to go that route. I'm not going to. And because of that, you can't. 
You can't make them do what they ain't gonna will, aren't willing to do. If they're not willing to come up with a mountaintop experience, that means they're not supposed to be there. Some people are just not willing to stretch. It is what it is. But some will be willing to stretch. They will be willing to go. They will be willing to meet you at that point. And you're going to see the ones that are going to be willing if you allow them. Some of you have to, that's why I said deal with your forgiveness. Some of you have been desiring to not have a wedding because you don't even want to deal with a thought of it. You don't want to deal with them. You don't want to see them. And some of that comes from bitterness and some anger in your heart and unforgiveness in your heart. So you cho you're choosing, I don't want nothing to deal with them. Meaning, I don't even want to situate the scenario for, to have them in my atmosphere. Not for a family occasion. Not for an event. No. I've been getting reunion in my dreams. This is an opportunity for a family reunion. And it's funny. It was a prayer I prayed years ago. And I verbally said it in a room full of people. And my mentor. That I stated that my wedding would be the um, restoration of my family. So the only thing that's stopping that from happening would be me. Some of y'all need to check your hearts on that as well. Some of y'all may want to have the courthouse wedding and a quick little thing because y'all don't want to deal with them people. Because you got a problem in your heart with them. Because of how the enemy used those people in that season. We're in a different time frame. We're in a different season. Remember, the word states, God will turn a man's heart against you. And he will also turn a man's heart for you. In, um... Exodus, I kept thinking Ten, Ten Commandments, I don't know why, <laughs> it's like Ten Commandments was coming to my brain instead of Exodus, but um, in Exodus, when the Lord sent all those plagues, God told Moses, I'm not going to turn their heart towards you, he's going to reject you, all these times. I'm allowing him to do that. Some of these people were allowed to do that. But when God's hand removes that level of allowing. And I was thinking about this when I was coming in the other day. When God's hand removes the time frame of their heart being turned against you. He'll turn them towards you. He'll heal them. So that they now have kind kindness towards you. Just like he's turning the hearts of the people that are supposed to be your strategic allies towards you. He can turn your family members hearts the same way. What do you think this is? <laughs> And God may be telling you, I'm going to turn their heart towards you. And the enemy that you were dealing with, that I allowed to have access to them for that season, that it's no longer going to have access to them. This relationship I'm allowing back into your life. These relationships I'm allowing back. 
but you have to seek the Lord because you also got to come to the understanding that as long some people they got air godliness and they don't got no God in them. So because they got air godliness and no God in them, whatever is still operating in them, you got to be able to see through it and act accordingly. So these people, this is why they are no longer going to have access to you after the wedding. And some of them just ain't going to have access because the Lord knows where their heart lies. So he's not going to allow them to potentially mess this up. So they're going to have to watch from a distance. But God's going to protect you in that. He didn't bring you this far to get you to this point, to get you in your marriage, for you to sabotage you when you get in it by allowing people that ain't supposed to be there to cross over into area because it's going to cause you problems i remember listening to a uh, common years ago and he was doing an interview where he talked about when uh he first was on to come up as being a musician he tried to bring his friends with him from wherever he was from and he realized that they didn't have the right um uh, heart posture to be able to be where he's at. And they were literally draining him. These people will not be allowed to have access to you. Because they got a siphon of spirit on them. So like I said. They're, they're supposed to. For a reason. Remember. A reason. A season. A lifetime. They will have a reason to be at your wedding. But that's the only. You're supposed to let them go and release them. Just like the people that come into your life seasonally, you suppose to let them go at the end of their season in your life. Don't try to drag them into a season they ain't supposed to be in because they will hurt you every time. Okay? Is there anything else that I needed to talk about in the name of Jesus? No. I got a word coming in uh, that's pretty lengthy, and I don't know if it's for everybody. I got to do some research on it, and now I know that I can do some Googling on this phone. I got to do research because it's going to be some parts to it, and this is judgmental word, so be prepared. So until next time, bye-bye.